bitch, you can get my own. <laughs> he said, look, what do you do? The thoughts, opinions, and statements expressed on this show are not the thoughts, opinions, and statements of KUAW, LTF Hill, 98.5. Old school, old school family. What's going on? Uh, it's here for the six o'clock uh, radio hour. Uh, we want to first say we apologize for not being here last week. We had uh, some family emergencies and stuff come up, but we are back today. Me and Deron, uh, we're gonna speak on uh, what's gonna be a s several week topic, which is gonna be called United Snakes of America. And you heard us, United Snakes, and a lot of us. Uh, know what happens when you deal with uh, snakes and so uh, we're going to get right into that uh, today and we do want to make sure that if anyone wants to call in and participate feel free to give us a call at 816-599-6893 816-599-6893 so uh, me and my brother are going to talk about what we uh, normally talk about on day-to-day -day, uh, conversations and uh, whatever if you want to go ahead and start it, bro. Oh, man, it's good to be with Mr. you this Walker, week. I can't hear mine. It's good to be with you this week, and uh, we just want to say uh, thank you uh, to all of those who follow us through the week. Uh, you keep up. You understand that we do uh, different community uh, outreach activities. Um, you know, we just want to be uh, someone who contributes uh, who provides information um, and uh, who's just always there for the youth you know that's really a big part of a conviction that we have which is uh, you know how can we provide a future how can we be a part of a future that's going to uh, be a, a better foundation than the one we inherited and for me that's a deep conviction that I have for this series here um, you know, some who see it, uh, hopefully you didn't take it as unpatriotic. Uh, me, myself, I have uh, elders in my family who, who serve and uh, take great pride in the flag, um, who obviously uh, offered their lives for it. So uh, with that being said, there's some things that are written in our Constitution. There are some things that are given lip service to by leaders and historically have been given lip service by leaders and when I go out and I observe and I see people living below that I'm just going to be real I plan on being as candid as I possibly can throughout this series exactly that's and what of course do. tonight but I mean even you know, when you go back and you say the military you know uh, for instance on the military uh when you sit back, man, <clears throat> and realize that so many of our soldiers fought in wars that really didn't even benefit us. And what I mean by that is when everybody wants to slam Colin Kaepernick for what he's standing up for, when we all should be riding with Colin Kaepernick. Every child should know about Colin Kaepernick. Every friend, family member, or whatever we got should be in agreement with Colin Kaepernick, you know, because me, I'm, I'm, I'm I mean, I'm going to be candid and we really going to be real yeah. these next several weeks, but you go to fight for this country that only when you come back, you got to drink off different water fountains. You got to sit on the back of the bus. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it's uh one of those type of things. I mean, what did we, what, what were we fighting for? All right, I like when you questions know, and, are thrown and, and, out there. And, yeah. and the thing of it is, bro, is when you're really looking at it, man, the brother never stated. He never slammed the military, and he never slammed the flag. Right. You know what I mean? Basically, what he was doing was bringing a light to what's going on. You know, we seeing YouTube videos of men shot down. We seeing men walking back to their vehicles with their hands up. I mean, Tavon Martin. I mean, the list goes on yeah and so uh it was time for us to bring light and then again where we look at and where we messed up at is because man imagine if the so-called negro got together 
and we truly just boycotted and did to the NFL and the league what our peoples in the 60s would have boycotted. Right. You know what I mean? Because the thing of it is, I mean, us is the so-called Negro, and let's, let's, let's go back and just keep it real. This is how they've been looking at us since we've been on these shores anyway. Yeah. Um, we being pimped, and we've been pimped since we've been here. Yeah. And to be pimped yeah. is a harsh, cold feeling. Right. Knowing that they don't love you. Right. They don't want you. Yeah. They only want you when they want to come through and hit. Right. They can't stand us. For what you, what you they can can't stand. And, and yeah. yeah. They can't stand us as black people yeah. in America. Yeah. And so while we sitting around and we being the addicts to sport and play you know what i'm saying i mean you got to realize us as black people in america we have sport and play and being cute to a science right all the hairstyles all the latest clothes yeah trends spinning rims jewelry got it down got it down packed yeah. we don't realize that we uh pretty much as a race of people make the least amount of money in the United right. States but we spend more yeah and we spend more on everything that we buy the devout the value of it depreciates from the time we walk out of the store and get in the car yeah you know we worrying about Black Friday for flat screen TVs and you know everybody's got certain challenges and stuff that they doing on the internet and the Kiki challenge and whatever and while we sitting here right now this is the most critical time that I think we have, we're going to be facing. And it's only getting ready to get rougher. I mean, you got a president of the United States which basically has given the green light. Pretty much. For European America to come back out and be how they, I mean, come on, we know what, let's make America great again. Yeah. America was never great. America has never been great. You want us to pay, be patriotic to a flag that was placed on stolen land. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, even when we call the United States of America, we're wondering why we're getting so sick when we go into these hospitals. But, I mean, honestly, would you really, really trust somebody to help you? And their, uh, logo, is their logo is a snake. Their logo is a snake. Yeah. But, I mean, go well, ahead. Well, you know, you said something very profound there, which it takes, at this point in time, you would say that it takes a level of, Braveness. There's a level of braveness that has to come to say, I'm honoring a flag that is on stolen land. Because even just to say that is to deal with reality and to deal with truth. And whenever you have, you know, let just follow me here, just for parable sake. You got somebody that you're in a relationship with, your children, whatever. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. you got you care for them. And they set course to a lie between you. So now there's a lie, there's a rift between you. Either there's going to continue to be the perpetuation of a lie or there has to be corrective action, right? The course has to change. Otherwise, every time you interact with them, there's gotta be a lie present. And so that's really, it's really about, we have to wonder what goes on with mental health in our country. What is the grade of mental health when we have, when well-being, and that's really where I want to kind of go from from here while I got course right now. Well, is, and you know what my saying is. Yeah. We're miseducated. Yeah. Do you want me to go ahead and say the next well, one? Well, 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 miseducated, <laughs> but why, we have a sense of well-being. Why is there really, some people would say that we're um, beating we're a dead horse. We are uneducated yeah. and Christian medicated. And yeah. I know a lot of people might get upset yeah and might be upset with me but people that truly know me yeah. know i love the panthers yeah i do i love yeah. everything that the black and Panther what was party. It significant about the panthers what's significant about the panthers that set them apart from other organizations or from other groups who tr who attempted to uh fill a need because it goes back to the syndrome do you got the house negro or do you got the field negro you know what I'm saying? The house Negro is going to be the one that master got me playing the violin in front of his people at the shindigs a couple of times a year. 
And if I do what I have to do for Master, he's giving me and my family the first of the scraps of clothes that they don't want no more. Yeah. I get to go home to my family tonight with all the extra eight over scraps off the whatever. And right. I get to go home and I'm not going to let no Negro come in here and mess up yeah. what I got. And so, therefore, when you go back and you look at the movie Roots, the movie Roots is so called because when we start to get off into what we're getting off into, I want to make sure we go to the very beginning to make sure it's broken down to where a kid can understand it. Let's look at our race, for instance. There is not a Jewish person in the United States that, forgot, that has forgotten their Holocaust. Yeah. And any Jewish person that you speak to, if you talk to them long enough, they're going to let you know that they're Jewish and what their Holocaust was and what happened to their people. And on top of that, the Jewish people have become the richest people in the world. Yeah. All the basketball, all the football, all these teams and everything, all of every source of entertainment is ran by Jewish. And when Jewish people can talk about their Holocaust, receive reformations, why is everybody so threatened when the black man speaks of our Holocaust? Because, see, where the Jews have it a little bit better than we have is the Jews have knowledge of self, and they're doing for self. The so-called Negro is the one that still don't know what our name is. We monkey shining. We cooning. We hold our heads down we afraid of massa but we'll be quick to kill each other we quick to kill each other right now we're not even paying attention to see what's going on in chicago yeah. the gangs are not sitting out there shooting up 66 people it's 53 weekend. this weekend 53 come on yeah. man but they sitting up here bringing movies about the purge right into the theaters and if you're not watching these movies and watching these people on tv with your third eye your third eye is which going to be your spiritual side but when we go back to just look at everything from the beginning, bro, the miseducation started from television. I don't call it television. Yeah. I call it television because at a young age, TV would make you think that a man could fly until you get older and you realize that that's not true. But let's look at Tarzan for a minute. Remember when we was growing up? <clears throat> yeah. And Tarzan would come on on Saturdays? This is one white man swinging through the jungle, controlling Master all the, the animals. Yeah. He's controlling all the animals and he controls all the people. And every time you saw the black people, this the true Africans and the descendants from that country, they carrying the luggage. They yeah. getting ate by the animals. It was so messed up that this system that we're living in now is a superior system. It's white supremacy at its finest. And when Tarzan would go off and we would go outside to play all of us black kids in the neighborhood, we fighting because everybody wants to be Tarzan. Cowboys and Indians. Saying, well, well, let's look at Long yeah. Ranger and Tonto. Yeah. Tonto is the origin of aboriginal person of this land. Yeah. First of all, you got long, the Long Ranger, which is supposed to be a crime fighter fighting for good, but he got a mask on his face. You see what I'm saying? Right. So when you look at Tonto that's riding around with him, we watching this because every time it would go off, everybody wanted to be the Lone Ranger. Nobody wanted to be Tonto. Right. And until we got older and you look in the dictionary, Tonto means stupid. Right. So the whole time when these series was going on, this white dude is calling this Indian who's land and this is his home. Right. Calling him stupid. stupid. And, yeah. and, and instead of him going and changing the name, he's calling the man that's calling him stupid, King Osama. Which means friend. Yeah. And it's the same thing that we do here uh, that we go now. You know, the government has our young women on welfare. Well, right now we got a president that's saying let's make America great again and basically trying to drive us back to a slave mentality. But when you got welfare and you turn the word welfare around and say it's farewell. And when they start taking it from you, this is what they're getting ready to say. And in order for you to be able to depend on their system, they gonna help you as long as the man is not involved. Right. We gonna give you this section eight, but we really don't want no Negroes up in here. You know, and I use the word Negro because we on the air, but a lot of our listeners understand and know what we mean. But it's it's the superior the superiority 
has started, man, from the times that we were children. Then when I say Jesus Christ, all of us see the pale skin, blonde hair, and blue eyes. Right. And so when we were growing up and we were under the influence <laughs> that when we asked who was that on that picture, Grandma, that's Jesus. Pray to the Lord. All right, but then, well, why is he white? You see, they they do these things in front of us that we pay no attention to. The, the, the Muslims are not the terrorists of the world that America wants us to believe in. The first terrorists were in the 60s. The first you terrorists... Mean well before that. Well, well, the Freedom Riders. 20s, yeah. Yeah, the Freedom Riders. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When the man that had his face covered up, throwing bombs, yeah. hanging people from trees, yeah. sicking dogs on polices... I mean, when you have... Call it the bloody, the red summer, I believe it's called. Well, yeah. when you got 13 white men in hoods and capes and they throwing bombs through window, that's a terrorist act. Absolutely. That's a group of terrorists. Right. I mean, we just seen a video a few months ago up in Virginia where the police is standing around the protest and they watched the European fire his weapon. Yeah. And then nothing happened. And see, we sit back and we beg, we cry, we marched, we begged, we've cried, we marched, and it hasn't got us. It hasn't gotten us anywhere. I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, we have a couple things we can do that is uh, a little bit better than what they used to be. But now we realize, and now, I mean, does it even matter if you jump out there and vote? Everybody know what the Russians and what our president was, yeah. was doing. He got his own people telling on him. Right. But he's not going nowhere. So I always say that it's miseducated, bro. And we, we, we are very miseducated from the jokes and stuff that we used to crack when we were children. You know, we would call each other. Oh, look at him. He's so black. He's a black African right. booty scratch. Yeah. You know I'm what I'm saying? Curious. I was thinking that when you said that, the, when you the, said with jokes we would say. Yeah, these are things that we have been taught and shown. We've been taught since children yeah. that black is the opposite. I'm going to guarantee probably this year one of us didn't say good hair, bad hair. Well, man, we grew <laughs> you know up and because somebody <laughs> yeah. had good hair and they was ashamed of really being who they were. Oh, man, my hair is good like this because I got Indian in me. My right. grandma said, I got this in me, you know, which I mean, a lot of us do to yeah. what happened is mixed up. I mean, we a lot of us is mixed up. But I mean, it's just like, for, for instance, Willie Lynch. I mean, the man, his mind was so cold. Yeah. To be able to put together yeah. a letter and to be able to invite all of the rich men at that time, white men together, and say, as long as you run your plantations and your fields by this doctrine that I'm going to give you, this is going to be something <coughs> that will go on for generation for generation. You know, and when I say let's keep it real, it's like we said in Lost Boys one time. You know, being a gangster, it don't just stop with killing your own people. It don't just stop shooting up somebody's house and killing a grandma and an instant ba uh, you know, innocent baby. If you're going to be a gangster, you got to be a gangster 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day, all day, anybody can get it. Yeah. Which means if we sitting in the front yard, couple guys on the porch, couple people in the yard, we playing dominoes, everybody got big heat on my thing is, is, I mean, two officers make everybody run and put everybody in check. All right. But if we drive down the street looking for somebody's house and we roll through too many times, somebody's going to say if they roll back through here, we're going to light them up. Yeah. And it's so easy to. So where's the integrity at? That's what saying. Yeah. Because the thing of it is, is because through the systematic design, we've been really made to dislike ourselves we've been made to hate ourselves and this has been going on for a very long time you know i sit in the barbershops a lot of the times and we talk about so many conversations and things and it just kills me how so many children don't know who marcus garvey is yeah they don't know who nat turner is they don't know who huey newton is shirley chisholm sojourner truth 
Mary McLeod Bethune, W.E.B. Du Bois. Yeah. I mean, Honorable, Honorable Louis Farrakhan, yeah, Honorable Elijah Muhammad, yeah. Noble Drew Ali. I mean, let's keep it real. And, and when I really sit back and I say, I heard my pastor one day at a time tell me, he said, um, when the worst, sometimes you ask for certain things and you get what you really are not ready for. Elaborate. And as a race of people, we cried and we wanted to be free so bad that when we have this subpar, this artificial freedom, we don't know how to act because mm -hmm. we've lost ourselves. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by this is when you go back and you look in the 60s and the boycotts and the riots, you know, we were close-knit. We were very close-knit. Mm -hmm. Very, very close-knit. Which means a couple brothers on the corner are not going to watch a police officer just beat down a woman yeah. with, with their sticks. Yeah. Um, well, let me, let me just intervene here real quick. So... When I grew up, you know, I didn't wasn't really able to decipher. I watched television and but I didn't realize that I had criminal activity going on in my house and out around my house, right? But I wanted to be a cop growing up. We all did. You said talk about the cops and robbers. I used to love watching the SWAT team on Saturday oh, nights. A team all of that, right? Mm -hmm. And so the 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 idea that we had of a cop was one who loved truth. Yeah. Who love justice. So, I mean, if we were working with that idea, and we often talked about in some of our broadcasts how we welcomed when the police officers would stop, give us baseball cards, basketball cards, football cards, and sit and really just talk with us as, as, as people, mm -hmm. you know? Well, um, they would come up to your school. He was called Officer Friendly. Yeah. That's what his name so, was back then. So we, we grew up with these type of relationships cultivated. Where did the awareness come that some of the some of the individuals who are in this who are behind this badge that are behind the shield are not meaning well for us? Because it's uh it's the powers that be and the people that are in charge. And a lot of times here in America the so called House Negro gets a little something mm -hmm. and forgets where they come from. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can live out on Rodeo Drive. I can live in Beverly Hills. You know, I got this, 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 and the other, and your back is turned from where you came from. And so a lot of the people that are in these positions or in, in legislature, man, right now, it's an agenda. All the police are working on under the same agenda. And you know what gets me is when the police constantly keep doing these violent acts, you always hear them come on TV the next morning. Well, right now, such and such will be suspended without pay, un pending investigation, and we just want America to know it's not all our police, it's just a few bad apples. Mm -hmm. But, man, it's been a few bad apples, what, the last 17 or 18 months? Well, this is the comical thing here, and I say that tongue-in-cheek. I don't mean that. Well, check this out. Tamir Rice was a 12-year-old who was in Ohio playing in a park, doing what you and I did. We actually mm -hmm. probably had BB guns. BB guns. Right? So he's playing with a plastic gun. It's pretty much connected to what's going on now where you have – they even have names for it. They got – uh, lemonade patty you know what I'm saying uh, a hot dog hot dog stand Annie you know what I'm saying <laughs> but Tamir Rice was really the first one because someone called in on him and said there's a kid playing in the park they had some gun hole officer pull up on site and draw down on him not only did he draw down on him he started he started shooting immediately so this is where thinking people have to be confounded have to be confused because our president and I won't get too much into it but this is a scenario I want to set up our president in 2017 gave a gave a speech to the uh, fraternal order of police 
And in that speech, he said, he said it seriously, but he said it to a rowdy crowd, for all police officers. He said, when you catch them, don't be nice to them. I know sometimes you try to put neatly fold their head into the, to the passenger, into the back seat, but it's okay to bump their head a little bit. It's okay to be a little rough with them. They're criminals. Now check this out. This is after Tamir Rice. We've had countless mass shooters. All of them can be white, have been white that I can recall. They've been taken in peacefully. Let's start with Dylan Roof. Let, that's the South Carolina uh, murderer who killed a, a U.S. senator. Then let's proceed and go with uh, the Parkland shooter, the Cruz kid. He shot up innocent children. But that's not the only Ran one. him through and got him something to eat before Ran they him took through him and in. got him something to eat. So he walked through a crowd unassuming, got to Subway, treated himself to Subway, and then was spotted by officers and peacefully brought in. What happened to the what happened to the concept of not being caring about the well being of the criminal? So we, we, we have some distinctions here that have to be brought up. That's why this conversation is so needed and critical. Well, because it's just one of those type of things. And like I said, I know a lot of uh, masses, children, and people probably would look at us the way that yeah. they did back in the day. Hey, man, you hear how they talking? And I ain't, hey, boy, them, them black folks over there are crazy. It's not that we crazy. It's that we bringing the attention to America ca, ca, like it should be, bro. Absolutely. Because here's the thing, bro. This started back on the plantation days. You know, yeah. Massa and the overseer would actually come into your cabin. Right. And take a man's wife or take his daughter. These are facts. These are facts. Document it. It's in if you go to any city hall and you look back far enough, they'll tell you who belonged to who in the documents. Continue. But here's the thing. After this these men so called come in and take your wife or your daughter mm -hmm. your wife's gone for an hour and a half mm -hmm. only to come back to you with her clothes hanging off of her and she's crying well you a heck of a dude to still love her i mean and and that'll be something we'll talk about later because you really got to be a spiritual person and have an unconditional love to still be able to accept her for that because it's not her fault but mm -hmm. then you would see the same people in the church service on Sundays and in my heart I don't believe that God is weak absolutely I don't believe God is subtle yeah and I don't believe that what we have endured since we've been on these shores that we're just supposed to pray and say we love our enemies and we're gonna get ours yeah when we get to the other side well, let's just go with this guarantee here. Uh, if there's anything I can put stand my, on my ground on is that God offers peace. And after getting ready to break down peace a little bit, just because I wanted to get a little understanding of what I get to hold on to is well-being. God is a sense of well-being. And I can only imagine what kind of well-being you can produce when you know someone can kick in your door and do what they want to you. And there's no sense of... Uh, there's no sense of recourse other than um, other than uh, maybe misguided hope. Hope is real. Uh, hope is, I would presume that hope is connected to uh, faith. And faith, we know, is well documented without works is dead. Faith doesn't exist unless there's a, unless there's a preparation phase that goes with it. It's not faith. It's, by definition, it's no longer faith. So... I guess really where I want to go with it and uh, is, you know, we're talking about the United Snakes. And this is not to take a jab at the United States. This is to take a jab at white supremacy. This is to take a jab at, at behavior that is inhumane. Uh, if we don't speak on it, if we don't, uh, if we don't educate our children, uh, I've been in the school systems and I've been in the schools and I would have you know that 
they're not teaching our children about the even the outline of our history when it relates to the marginalized people when it relates to the people who gave free service so when you're talking about providing a free service for a nation you're talking about we are endowed with people who are inventors we are endowed with people who have come up with things like the street lights who have come up with things like the incubator who have come up with agricultural when we talk about agricultural uh innovation you're talking about how a group of people are going to eat now let's go here with the history we the commercial break. all right we're going to go ahead and close here uh and we're going to come back with hopefully i can give just a small briefing of history of the greatness that the marginalized or what they call the enslaved americans contributed to this country so just give us a couple minutes and we'll be with you shortly in our face. Yeah. It's in our face. It's you know, time. In 2006, I'm going to bring that up. You know, in 2006, the FBI, so here's the thing, it's no disrespect to the police, and I'm going to tell you why. The FBI are a higher order of police than the, than the street officer. And this administration has all but uh, torn down the credibility of the FBI. That's treasonous. So if what they're doing is not treasonous, what we're doing on speaking on in, on un, unequal uh, policing, we should be awarded funds. And you can say that about the FBI. When the FBI in 2006 came out with, with a report saying that there is great alarm that, that, the, F, that the police, uh, the entire police force has been infiltrated by white supremacists. That's documented, bro. That's documented. Mm -hmm. Worthwhile conversation. If it's not here, I haven't heard it nowhere else. I ain't heard it nowhere else. I know it ain't on the mainstream media. No. Let's bring them the news, bro. <laughs> I'm, I want to keep cracking the whip. Let's bring them the news. We got to bring them the news. <laughs> okay, after this, we'll go back. Right. Okay. All right, old school family. We had to uh, take a commercial break for a few minutes, but we're back to just pick up uh, the topic in uh, the first part series of America's uh, United Snakes. And I just want to reiterate when we go back and we look, you know, because we got so many topics we're going to cover. We're going to get into Black Wall Street and how the Federal Bureau of Investigations, which is the FBI, literally bombed Oklahoma. And we'll get off into that. But when you look at the Panthers, to have a country as big as this country and the head of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover at the time, the only thing that that man wanted to see was the demise of the Panthers. And this was, I mean, you know, my thing of it is, is when we all are letting you pimp us and beat us and kill our babies in the streets, and as long as we keep marching, and seeing the old school Negro spirituals, everything is fine. But once we stand up and we start to speak out about the situation, then we are considered a threat. We're considered a threat. You know, for instance, the T-shirt you got on the Black Panther. I like yeah. that, by the way. But we had a, the, the movie from Marvel come out of Black Panther. Yeah. And this is 2018. Yeah. I've been living since the 70s. Every TV show we've ever had has been white. Yeah. White people had the nerve to be upset. Well, why is it called the Black Panther? And why is it hardly nobody white in there? I mean, y'all had y'all have had TV since we've been on the shores. Yeah. You know, anything that we try to have 
and establish of our own. It's either two things that they want to do. Well, let us be a part of it so that we can offer love and be able to love everybody. Or then we have a couple token Negroes, just like in the NFL right now. NFL has been going on since I've been middle. No black makes up 75% of the NFL is black, right? Yeah. There is not one black owner yeah. in the NFL. Yeah. No black owner. Well, well, one thing we gotta, uh, we really have to look at, man. We have to go back to the piece of paper that people have died for. We gotta understand that when the pilgrims got here, they declared that we're gonna kill everything. Now let's look at the Bible. When God was telling them to deal with the Canaanites, the Israelites, He was the the pro, the proclamation in the scriptures is that He told them to annihilate everyone. So we've got to we've got to talk real. Right, yeah. we got to talk will when it comes to manifesting. Manifesting the, the, the idea of manifest destiny. If you don't know about it, Google that. Manifest destiny is real, and so what we got to go and look at the paperwork. And so the paperwork says here, and God is, is is my cover and my shield. So we got to definitely go and say that, bro. It says that we hold these truths self-evident that all men are created equal, right? And so it goes on to say and talk about the pursuit of happiness. All right. So if you're not, if you don't situate yourself to be a man or situ, situate yourself and what goes into that is that you have liberties. And so how do we, how do I understand that? Only through attaining knowledge. I don't know anything. So all I have is just the dogged pursuit of knowledge. So this is what my research has lended in just knowledge. And I don't know anything. So you got to cross reference it. Liberty is the opportunity to be able to pursue your dreams, to pursue your happiness. What, have, what position have we put ourselves in to pursue our happiness? You just spoke on it. We're not going to get too in-depth on it, but now we're talking, we got to go into Greenwood, Oklahoma. We got to go into uh, Black Wall Street and how those people established themselves to, to pursue their dreams of happiness. And Same what happened? Terrorism was allowed Same in Same thing country. with Rosewood. Same thing with Rosewood. They were pursuing their dream and they were pursuing their happiness. And what happened? Terrorism was tolerated. It was negotiated with. I mean, when you go yeah. back and you look at Rodney King, yeah. Rodney King was really just beat away that, I mean, I don't even know the words that you would call for the way that that man was beat. Mm -hmm. And for people to look at that tape <laughs> and those officers weren't found guilty yeah, and really sentenced to jail. I'm talking about, man, them brothers that beat that man like this should have had 10, 15 years. Yeah. And I'm talking about the real old school 10. Yeah. You're going to do eight and a half before right. you get out. Um, these are the things that we have to look at, man. This, this, this is a systematic, it's a system. For 450 plus years, this company received free labor. Yeah. Free labor. How beneficial is that? Not only when it's, it's labor. See, it's undermined it when it's labor. You got to think about they had a, a slave invented the incubator. And he did it through his inquiry in the fields. And he put his eggs underneath manure. And through that process, he learned that heat, that this kind of organic heat is going to, uh, uh, is going to superficially uh, uh, allow that egg to hatch. And so, the, but he gets no credit. He's not mentioned in the history books. Do you understand just on concept, if we just use our common sense, what the intellect those slaves or those enslaved human beings were endowed with? They had come from some information. They had come from a source of civilization that was able to bring culture to America. They weren't just slaves. I call them enslaved. They were enslaved human beings who brought culture, who brought intellect, who brought community, family, and they brought it here to these shores. A lot of the foods that we go eat that is dirt called American food, this was food that the, that the enslaved individuals knew how to cook. Well, it's the same thing that so Kunta... So they brought science as it's well. It's the same thing that Kunta said to Fiddler. He said, Fiddler, and he was crying. Yeah. He said, I don't believe how these people tell me about this Jesus and that they love and they love God and they cut a man's feet off for running to be free. I mean, when you sit back and you look at the way it was designed, bro. 
Yeah. It, I mean, they, they put together ships that had strongholds to be able to have men, women, and children shackled and strapped to each other for a 90-day voyage yeah. throughout the sea. Bring them up a few times, wash them off like they animals, yeah. and put them back. Right. Can you imagine dying because the feces and everything inside of that stronghold was so bad that you died? Malnourished? Yeah. Not new. I mean, you weren't nutrition. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And it seems to me that when these people got here, what would make another man brand another man? You 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 brand your initials. Yeah. Of your plantation. Yeah. So that if you do get caught running or you ain't got your papers and pass, they look at your brand and they don't, this rental's property right here. Yeah. I mean, you go back and you look, man, and nothing, nothing nothing's changed. It's right here in our face. <clears throat> it's 2018. It's more racist now than it's been since I could ever remember. Yeah. Just throughout my lifetime. Yeah. 2018. Yeah. And all of a sudden, this one president gets in office, and now all these people are coming out of the woodwork using the patriotic theme. Yeah. To be racist. Right. Well, who's America for? It is what we got to ask ourselves. Well, when Dred Scott, who did America say it? Uh, it was for when Dred Scott said. I have a family, I have a wife, I have I have a vision for my life, and I don't believe I should be in this situation. And they told Dred Scott, you are one-fifth of a human being. Therefore, you are not deemed, uh, you are not deemed eligible for the protection of the U.S. Constitution. And so that's why, to this day, when we're begging to be accepted by Master and his family, and we're crying about the injustices that we're receiving, is go back and look what we're at, look what we're labeled in the Constitution. Right. We one fifth of human being. The rest is unclassified. So how therefore are you going to be treated equal by people who call themselves men, but look at you as a third of a man? So the benefits don't apply to you. Right. And so if you do start to educate and wake up the people, the masses of the people, your life has to be taken yeah because you become a threat yeah the nfl is over 75 percent black if all the black dudes would just take a stand and say hey we want to make sure that what our brother stood for we want to we we want we want light bro to we want light bro to what's going on yeah we want light brought to these situations that's going on. Now, when you sit back and you look in the NFL, they have a program for everything. Nothing against breast cancer. I've got women in my family that are breast cancer survivors, but the NFL men are wearing pink. Yeah. They had them wearing badges or little things for the police officers. There's everything. But when you speak about police brutality and what's going on in our neighborhoods and our communities, that's when yeah you it's foul now it's foul it's foul it's foul to so many people unfortunately when you speak on uh inhumane i just got through looking at a uh a um a title of a book and the title was uh humanity after hitler and it was a exposition on how humanity was the dignity of humanity was justified by the correction of Hitler and the Nazis' acts. So you mentioned uh, Holocaust earlier in our conversation and how there was a gross inhumane activity that took place in the world's eye, right? Mm -hmm. And there's an understanding universally that in order for this to be something that is made right because you have to make it right or it's always going to be wrong mm -hmm. we have to understand how humanity works mm -hmm. we are social creatures mm -hmm. so if we so if you would if we were a moth to the light or to the flame of hate we're going to stay in that place mm -hmm. as a community until there's corrective action mm -hmm. right so what we found out what the author was really saying was that 
there needed to be court cases, which they, they talked about the court cases that were required to make this thing correct. They talked about the people who needed to be, the corporations that were involved, that needed to be highlighted, because these corporations can go underground, and you know, for all we know, they are, they're Anad dormant. Anadarko, you know? Mobile, Shell, Exxon, mm. Philip Morris. They, they're still around. They're still around. You see them? <laughs> I mean, they're still around, but the thing of it is, man, is it's in our face. Yeah. It's in our face more than it has ever been. And I've never just understood why are we so afraid to have our own? Why is, why, we, we're never, as long as we killing up each other yeah. and we acting ignorant, it ain't no threat. Well, we saw what happened with our pursuit of happiness. We had the liberty, we had the liberty like little, like I went to Chicago and they got a little China. And little China, I mean, went to China, but I've seen some pictures, and it looks just like it. Because every big time city has a little China. I went to San Antonio. San Antonio has a, uh, that they have a building in San Antonio that just has a Mexican flag. <laughs> There's no U.S. flag on that bad boy. It's just a Mexican flag. But if we want anything of our own, we're racist. We're hateful. We being mean. And America's afraid. You know, I finally came up with the, the analytical process of why America doesn't like to talk about our Holocaust, yeah. which we're still being affected by to this day. Absolutely. Because when you have a, 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 some, let's just call ourselves androids. Yeah. Right now we need to be reprogrammed. Right. We're running off of outdated software. And right now we're running out of control. And the only thing that we know how to do right now is cause violence, pain, sexual immoral acting, Talk not the raising the children, bowing yeah. down to the oppressor. We're, we, we need to be reprogrammed. And when we get into later shows, I'm going to let you know where I think our medication truly needs to come from. But it's not... The antidote that we have right now, we know who has the yeah. prescription Absolutely. for what we need. Absolutely. And we're going to speak about it. But what I'm trying to say is Europeans do not like to talk about the Holocaust because it makes them feel uncomfortable. When you look at the word uncomfortable, it makes them feel embarrassed and it makes them feel sad because the blood to be able to create these malicious acts are blood from their forefathers. Yeah. So it's always, man, we don't want to talk about it. It's not like that no more. We all no, it's still like that. Yeah. It's just undercover. Yeah. I mean it's and it's not even undercover no more. It's right here in our face. No, it's not undercover anymore. It's it's yeah. I mean it's yeah, it's right here in our face. Yeah. And at the end of the day, there bro, there's not gonna be no justice. Yeah. I mean, when you look at a bully, our the only way you're going to deal with the bully is somebody in your family is going to have to hold your hands up yeah. and say, when you go to school and he does this to you, this is what you have to do. Yeah. Yeah. To defend yourself. Yeah. And even our school teachers back in the day said, if it's two or three of them at the school, just hit the one that's talking the most. Yeah. And watch what the other ones do. Yeah. But they also educated us to prepare ourselves not to be scared and running from the bully every day. Yeah. Well, you know, it talks about in we, Revelation. We, we've been bullied yeah. since we've been on these shores, bro. Yeah. You, you, well, it talks about we've got we've got we've got on high. See, this is why I love that Constitution. I'm going to tell you why. Because it says we hold these true self-evident. See, what we're talking about is God is the only one. You can say what you want to say about those it was an all-white panel. Now, there's a there's a, a conservative talk show host who I like who's pretty bold. There's a couple of them. And a brother told me about this. A solid brother told me about these gentlemen. And he said, he talked. To, he was talking to a, a liberal uh, television anchor, and he was like, they're all white. And that's just the real truth, that all the framers of the Constitution were all white. But they said this, that only God can really decide how you pursue your happiness. Only God can really decide you know how you exercise your liberties and bring conviction only know that humans are going to treat each other how humans do 
the only reason I say that is that at some point in time we as a people you as a father as one who loves black women me as a father who one who loves black women we have to understand that there is a there is a expectation that we have in order to be considered men brother mm -hmm. in order to be considered men to protect our families now if terrorism is a potential threat yeah the one on the right we have to go about business we have to go about business accordingly and terrorism will not be negotiated with nor tolerated that's how a human life is to be lived and all men gather around that regardless of race creed or color but we and also, i know that for a but fact we also have to be educated man yeah we have to educate we ain't gonna get everybody but we have to educate as many that we probably can reach yeah and because the passion that we have for old school the ones that we're paying homage to from old school yeah. and the ones that we're trying to reach through old school we doing everything that we possibly can do to spread the message the message and offer um education yeah. which i go basically is knowledge of self you have to have knowledge of, of self you have to have supreme wisdom, supreme mathematics. You know what I mean? Yeah, it has to be. And so you talk about white supremacy. What does that mean? It's just saying that it's better. So you have to have mathematics. You have to have the best mathematics. Yes, 360 what, degrees. What's going to yield? The circumference of a circle. When you apply angles or when you apply math or you apply what you're going to do with your time, it needs to bring back something that's going to be, what is the best thing that's going to come back? Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, I, but that's what I'm saying. We need supreme mathematics. Yeah. We do. Yeah. And until we get knowledge itself, not all of us, I can even take a little bit from the 5%. Yeah. The 5 percenters. Yeah. And I love them so much, but you have, do the math with me. What is it, the 85% that are deaf, dumb, and blind sheep right. of America? Yeah. The consumers? Yeah. The ignorant? So you're idiotic 5 people percent from their own yeah then the next one which is what would it be so you started with 85 we got 15 left what you gonna do with so it? now we got 10 yeah which make up the people that everything is being controlled by right your government tv entertainment and all of that right and then you have the five percent which are the ones of us ourselves or who are believers and have the true knowledge yourself and yeah whatever but uh anyway we down to our final two minutes and this is going to be a topic that we're going to be on and we are going to have some special guests in the uh upcoming weeks you know Les king we will have some special guests that are going to be here to help us drive this nail home what i do want to say is that i do love old school i love all of our fans our friends uh, everybody that's with us on Facebook, we love you and we hope that you stay with us. And we do do this for y'all. And as Jerry would say, if you feel that nobody else cares for you, we do. Go ahead and take it home, bro. All right. It's time to wrap it up, old school. Thank you for, once again, your attention, for your audience, for your likes, for your shares. Please go to KUAW and support what the station is doing here. You hear so much when the commander in chief tells you that. We are being ruled by fake media and that the media is our enemy. You might not support the man or believe in what he's saying, but when the leader of the free world tells you that true media is hard to come by, real media is hard to come by, uh, you have to take listen. Here we have an endeavor here at KUAW that looks to put out uh, articulate information that comes straight from the community. Uh, and we, we have leadership here that is wanting to maintain the integrity of the information that we put out and that it comes from the heart, uh, but that it's also competent and that it's brought to you uh, with, with good technology. So we need your support. Uh, we're going to have drives come up here soon. And I was, when as that information is rolled out, we want you paying attention so that we can get people on the streets. We've done some great things throughout the months. There's one brother who brought some fresh news to you. Who I think one of the major news services uh, brought after he broke it out and that's with the limited resources that we have more of that type of great stuff is going to be taking place so again uh
Go on, like, so go share with KUAW. Um, also, go to the website, support KUAW on YouTube. And uh, last but not least. And uh, support old school. Yeah, we are grab old school. Grab a t-shirt. Grab a hoodie. Uh, whatever, bro. Yeah. So definitely uh, go check out www.oldschool.com. We got articles up. I actually just posted an article uh, speaking on a little bit of what we want to have that dialogue with you live and in real time as long as you like it. So, hey, again, once again, we do this for y'all. So, brother, go ahead and close us out. We got a minute or so. Hey, until left. next week, we'll see y'all later. Next Monday, 6 to 7. We love you. Old school.